Hi everyone, uh, good morning. Uh, we're here from DKIT to present um, Partners in Employability, which is a student staff collaboration to develop an award to recognise the skills developed by active student engagement. Uh, my name is Maria Maguire, I'm the president of the Students' Union. My colleagues here today are Linda Murphy, who's Head of Student Services, um, Dr Moira Maguire, who is um, the Centre of Learning and Teaching, and Catherine Staunton from the Careers and Employability Office. Okay, so let me give you an overview of um, the project. Uh, this project is a collaboration between uh, staff and students who right from the offset will work together to develop a framework. Um, this is a step on the partnership road where students will be co-creators right from the very start. We'll establish uh, structures and process to support student engagement, highlight and develop key graduate attributes and the empowerment of students. Um, the principal offset of this is a special purpose award, which I think is a ten, which is a ten credit purpose award. So we have a very active, um, so we have students who are very very active um, in the life of DKIT. We have a very active volunteer society. We have student ambassadors who um, are trained to take new in students around campus. They help out at careers day, open days, events. We have science and sports students who engage with the wider community through various projects and um, visiting schools or having schools come in, doing showcases and exhibitions. Uh, we have students who conceive, set up and run societies, um, who manage societies, whether it's the treasurer, um, the chairperson, the secretary, um, who are actively involved in, in promoting sports clubs and societies throughout. Um, through the SU ourselves, we train our class reps in how to better represent um, their classes. So that's anything from um, effective communication skills to presentation skills to uh, professionalism in how to deal with um, peers and um, lecturers or service providers. Um, through, we also have an SU crew, um, that's students who engage um, promote and showcase the events and different campaigns that the Students' Union run. Um, so um, all of these school students are developing skills employers are looking for. So they're developing leadership, problem solving, empathy, teamwork um, and effective communication. So our project is about empowering these students to recognise and evidence the skills and give them the recognition in a special purpose award. So the rationale for the project. Okay, so how can we support and recognise this engagement? Uh, we need structures and processes that foster engagement um, and partnership. So dialogue has already opened with our class reps um, and feedback has been currently been received by them on the award, on the award about us, us all working together to create this project. Um, and so far they've been incredibly positive um, and asking an awful lot of questions. So that's kind of uh, working in our favour, that they're, they're actively giving an awful lot of thought to what we're proposing and an awful lot of thought um, to the value to it and to also to working together. Um, so they're putting the mechanisms in place. So through this project, students and staff will come together um, and create the framework. Um, it's putting the skills students have already learned um, into a real world context. It's exploring their future role as professionals um, while also improving their self-confidence. Um, students are open, actually, indeed, students are excited about this prospect um, of becoming partnerships, partners and working together on this. Um, my own experience um, as a student officer uh, has been as a class rep for three years. I also set up a society and I was chairperson of the Mature Student Society and I've also worked on different working groups and steering committees. Um, so I can kind of see, I can see the value that this project has. Um, so I'm going to pass you on to Linda. Thank you. So I'm just going to look at what the project will deliver. Um, and as mentioned in our overview, staff and students will work in partnership to develop a framework um, for recognising and evidencing um, student engagement, particularly in terms of employability. And the complete project will be underpinned by significant professional development amongst all of the partners in the project. There will be three main um, deliverables from the project. Um, the principal outcome of the project being a validated special purpose award, 10 credits at level 7. 
This will be supported by processes and procedures um, to develop a system for um, recording student engagement and also then um, resources and activities to support the delivery of the award. So what success will look like in the short term, we propose um, to have the validated special purpose award um, for a targeted group for the first, for the first term, um, a piloted group, particularly for students' course representatives and then for members of our volunteer and society. In the medium term, then, we look at um, extending that and having more students registered on the programme. In the longer term, then, um, students will be better equipped to engage in our Institute's quality assurance processes. It'll also, the project will also have a positive impact on skills, which will be evidenced by students in the portfolios presented to employers. Um, and we hope that then, again, that'll lead to positive feedback from employers. So I'm going to hand you over to Moira now to talk us through how we plan to action the project. Thanks, Linda. So how will we go about it? Um, the initial step will be to set up, uh, set up the governance of the project, set up the steering group and start to identify our needs and priorities. We've already identified a uh, need to build capacity in key areas, which I'll talk about in a moment, but that's very much part of the early stage of the project. So it's professional development really for all of us involved to enable us to design the programme, design the uh, supporting processes and also to design the resources that will enable us to deliver it. The next stage would be to validate the programme then to launch the programme, to run and evaluate the pilot. Um, at each stage, this is going to be underpinned by um, ongoing consultation with all our stakeholders and by ongoing promotion and awareness raising with respect to the initiative. In terms of capacity, the areas we've identified where we need to build capacity are partnership, working in partnership. The student union will lead on that strand and will implement and coordinate all that activity. We need to build capacity in curriculum design among all partners and the Centre for Excellence in Learning and Teaching will implement and coordinate that. And we need to build capacity in all our understanding of employment, employability and uh, student services is going to take the lead on that. So that will help us to come together to have really a shared vision of where we're going with this um, and a framework for developing the programme. The specific work packages are the actual design of the programmes, the learning outcomes and so on, content assessment, the resources that will support that, including Moodle page, that's our VLE um, workshops, the processes, a very important would be the recording of student engagement activity. We have processes uh, in some areas to do this, but we'd need to scale it up considerably, make sure they talk to each other. There's quite a bit of work to do there. And then the procedural end, the programme set up, the administrative side of that work as well. Um, throughout this will be informed and guided by iterative consultation with all our stakeholders. We were asked in our feedback to make it uh, to clarify the involvement of students and students are full partners in this project so at the governance level the student union is a full partner, the student union president is a full partner in the project, is a key member of the steering group. In terms of the development, the student union is going to lead in the capacity building side in terms of partnership, and we're going to have extensive consultation with class representatives in the development phase, and that has already begun, as Maria mentioned. In terms of the programme design, we want this to be collaborative, and that's what a lot of the capacity building is about. So students will be involved in the curriculum design. Um, all the underpinning processes will be agreed through consultation with class representatives. Um, one of the parts I'm most excited about is that we are planning to employ students over the summer to work with us on developing some of the uh, learning resources to deliver the programme, which will be um, very exciting from our point of view. Uh, in terms of then the implementation, the class reps and student ambassadors will be very active in the programme promotion throughout and um, will be, the student union will continue to be active in the management and promotion of the programme and again there will be ongoing consultation throughout. I'm just going to hand over now to Catherine just to tell you a little bit about the impact. Okay, so just to summarise on, on, on the impact um, and I suppose how we're going to measure that impact um, of, of the project, I suppose we've identified five main areas that we, we see the, the, the impact focusing on. Firstly, in the area of reach, um, engaging um, with the staff, the students, um, the USI, uh, uh, everybody involved in engaging within that and measuring that through 
the engagement within um, consultations and the uptake of students in, in the actual project itself, the programme launch and ongoing workshops and presentations throughout. The, the, the other um, second area is the area of the team itself and building that capacity, as, as, as my colleagues have talked about, to be able to collaborate well in a sustainable way, in a framework which involves everybody, and I suppose setting up a model on how to do that. Um, Cross-institution, not siloed, but everybody's involved from, from student, academic, um, and careers and, and employers as well, and that would be an area close to me, and reflecting each of us on that and sharing our learning as that, as that develops. Then um, I suppose key is the, the learning for, and, and the learners, the, the student themselves, their engagement with the process, um, connecting with students and understanding that they know what they know, that they can apply and articulate what they know, and they can adapt to that for the workplace. Um, and getting the student feedback on the programme and how relevant it has been for them, um, and the employers and the impact that they see it, it, it having a direct feedback on in terms of either placement or going on into to graduate opportunities. Um, the next area, and I suppose this is really key for us in the project, is the whole idea of organisational practices and systems. That this is a framework, a model that will be um, sustainable to ensure um, greater partnership in working with students as opposed to just giving it a sort of a, a sort of a, um, lip service to it that is actually embedded within how we do our work. Um, and that it does recognise the, the valid um, and vital contribution of students to the life of DKIT as a community, as a place of learning, and as a place of engaging with employers. Um, and their, their feedback and their participation is going to be a, um, a way in which their involvement is going to ensure that they're involved in the quality assurance processes within curriculum development as a whole and a model to support that going forward. Um, nurturing and recognising active citizenship, as, as mentioned already, that, that this will hopefully act as um, an advocate for, for year on year that more people and students will be involved. And academics and the whole student um, and uh, staff body will be actively involved in ensuring that active citizenship has, has, has a key role within the Institute. Um, and that we have quality partnerships, um, that we're able to build on the existing partnerships that are, are working very successfully and grow um, with the community voluntary and industry networks. And then that final area of culture of enhancement, that this is something that is embedded within how we do our work in DKIT, that that is a model of partnership that can be extended to other areas um, and that contributes ultimately to the partnership. And I suppose how we would measure that would be the response of students and, and staff to the initiative and any outputs in terms of publications, workshops that we can, um, I suppose, move forward on. So I think that, um, thanks for um, the focus then on, on sustainability, um, I suppose, Key to, to, to the Institute in developing this is that it's something that has legs that can stand on its own after the initial um, setup. Um, resources are required to develop this framework to have something robust, something that can withstand the, 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 the ebb and flow of these types of projects so that we have good systems in place and supporting processes. But beyond this, it will be managed and maintained and sustained by the staff of the Institute and the students. Um, and thereafter will become in, integrated into how we do our work and sustained by, by, by the staff and the resourcing that, it, that exists already. So the, really the, out, the initial outlay is where we're going to bed down the solid foundation. And then on an ongoing basis, it will be up to all of us involved in the partnerships to continue to build awareness and promote the programme among all stakeholders involved. Okay, so thanks very much for your time.